one of inspirations and light motives for today's thinking and decision making about how to make a difference, how to stand out. It comes from a quote of Mel Gibson's movie called Hexa Ridge, and the quote says, one more, please Lord help me get just one more. That's a true story about a guy called Desmond Doss. He was a soldier and a medic. And he fought in war without weapons. He refused to carry weapons. What was important for him was just to save as many lives as possible. And so one night, as he was barehanded, he climbed upon a ridge, he found a wounded soldier, he put it on his shoulders, and he brought him down back to safety. And as he was exhausted, afraid, and bone tired, he silently exclaimed, one more, please Lord help me get just one more. That's a story about humanity, but also about our vast inner potential that all of you have. But are you going to use it? You know, after graduation, we all experience major turnaround in our lives. Because from birth until graduation, no matter what you did, there was basically the same through line. All the time, you were told what to do by our teachers, by our parents. But now things are different because nobody will guide you by your hand anymore. Nobody will tell you what to do. You have to take ownership of your life, and it's up to you. One more principle really works. Let me tell you my story. I work as a product manager in a pharmaceutical company. A couple of years ago, I was a salesman in the same company, and I wanted to be promoted, but there was a problem. There were no vacant positions. And another problem, everybody wants to be promoted. So what I ask myself is how to stand out, how to make a difference. And that's the question you will be facing with for the rest of your lives. So really, how to stand out? By one more, of course. But one more of what? I looked around and I noticed that there is one skill which is so, so, so required, nobody likes to do it. One skill which is such high in demand, nobody likes it, everybody is afraid. And that skill is public speaking. And I didn't like to do it either. I was afraid too, but I did it. I took every opportunity to deliver a speech. Whenever, wherever there was an audience, I would deliver a speech, one more. I went to Toastmasters, one more. I was a moderator at many for many events. To tell you the truth, I mean, who likes to be a moderator? I don't like to do it. It takes time, you have to prepare. It's uncomfortable, but I do it anyway, because that is in line with my decision that I want to, be, that I want to be, become a better speaker. And now I see benefits. Seven days ago, I was approached if I want to come here and deliver a talk to you. And I said, why not? One more. I will tell you that upon my experience, public speaking is the best leverage you can have for yourself the best shortcut you can have for yourself in your professional career. And let me tell you why. Not only you're going out of your comfort zone and growing one more, but let's say you're a student. Maybe you are working somewhere or you own a company. And let's say you're spending 40 hours weekly doing your profession and you might be great, and you most certainly are. But then you come into this room full of strangers, nobody knows you. Nobody knows how good you are. But if you have the opportunity to stand here or somewhere else for just five minutes, and then you'll deliver a nice presentation, you will make a great impression, and they will most probably say, that was so nice.
I was thinking about, by the way, do you know why I'm here? I was thinking about, uh, did you read one of my books? I know you didn't. I don't have any books written. <laughs> what about inventions? What do you think? How many inventions did I make? Zero. No inventions. What do you think? Which company do I own? I don't own a company. I'm here just because I made a decision to become a better speaker. And I have coupled this decision with one more principle. And you know, this one more principle wasn't implemented by many people. Once upon a time, there was Homo erectus. He was predecessor to Homo sapiens. And according to researchers from Australian National University, he was extinct because he was lazy. He was using the same tools, the same tools of inferior quality, which were handy. He knew that up there on the hill, there were much better tools, but he wasn't like Desmond Doss, and he didn't implement one more principle. And so one night, Homo sapiens was sitting with Homo erectus around the campfire. They were chatting with each other, and they were eating corn. And Homo sapiens was doing something all the time. He had piece of leather, he had improvised needle made out of fish bone, and he had threads made from birch bark. And all of this was very, very annoying to Homo erectus, and he finally said to him, Stop it! I will not stop it! And Homo sapiens said, I'm making my sneakers so I can run faster. And can you guess what happened the following night? As they were sitting around the campfire, they heard some strange noise back there in the bushes. They both turned around, and to their dismay, they saw a giant brown cave bear much bigger than modern bears are, much more dangerous. And the bear was very hungry, was very mad, and was just about to attack them. And seeing that, Homo sapiens put on his new sneakers, and Homo erectus asked him, Why are you doing this? You cannot run faster than a bear. Do you, want, do you want to know what Homo sapiens said? It's not a bear. I should be running faster than. For the last eight months, I've been also involved in coaching of public speaking and leadership program for two groups of people. One is from 18 to 29, students, graduates, young professionals, and the other is from 30 to 55, middle and senior management of Croatian companies and banks. And every time they would get some assignments to do for the next time, to prepare something, some presentation or something like that. And some of them would be really good. They would be excellent. They would implement one more principle. And what about the others? Fail. Why? When you ask them why, what did they say? I didn't have time. My dear friends, tomorrow or sometimes later, the bear is going to appear. And what do you think? Whom is he going to eat? Those who do one more or those who don't have time? You know, there are many books, teachers, courses, lessons, Podcast, but it all basically boils down to two simple words, one more. Just think about the time when you have achieved something significant for yourself. Was it passing an exam? Was it graduating? 
Was it finding a new job? Think about it. Was, it. was it success overnight? Or was it preceded by one more? And by thinking about it, you will see that one more is really essential approach in mastery of anything. And as you are sitting right now with each other, listening to me and watching, maybe you will come up with idea about how to implement this one more principle in your life. And I don't know if you will implement it from to today, from tomorrow, or sometimes later. Remember this guy called Desmond Doss, who fought in war without weapons? What do you think? How many lives did he save in total? 75 lives. He was awarded with Medal of Honor. What I would like for you, for you, for you, is that you award yourself with Medal of Honor today by implementing one more principle to whatever matters in your life. Let's say you are not satisfied with your physical appearance, you would like to look better, feel better, be healthier. You know you would have to go to the gym or to do some sports, but it's terrible. And what do you do? You just put your sneakers on, one more. Put your shirt on, one more. Do the first rep, do the first set, come again. And after a while, you will feel excellent. You will see results. You won't have to push yourself anymore. It will become your second nature. How many of you would like to become better in public speaking? Excellent. It isn't so important how good you are right now, how bad you are. Are you nervous or not? What is important is that, is that you just find the first opportunity to deliver a speech and then you do it. Don't bother with it if it's good or bad. Just do it for the first time and then for the second time and then for the third time. And after a while, you will become remarkable. Yesterday, I was in the supermarket. I had a shopping list with myself. And I bought everything, except one thing, one very important thing, one thing which was of pivotal importance. And what that one thing was? I forgot to buy a lollipop for my child. And when I came back home, what do you think my little princess said to me, seeing that lollipop is not there? Seeing that the only thing which matters is not there? What did she say to me? Please, Daddy, go back there <laughs> just one more time. Just one more time for me. And now it's up to you to do one more. Just one more for you.